But there is no controversy when it comes to Susan Boyle and her golden voice. Our big surprise for her in just a couple of minutes. But first, her story from NBC's Donna Friesen. Susan. From her modest home in a Scottish village, Susan Boyle is trying to take her newfound fame in stride. Thank you very much. I have a lot of support from the, the, the neighbourhood in general. They're very supportive. Cards and letters are flooding in. Her neighbours astonished and proud. The world has discovered her magic. I had a wee tear in my eye and my whole hair stood up in my skin. She was the surprise sensation of the popular reality show Britain's Got Talent, a middle-aged, unemployed woman who says she's never been kissed, certainly never been hailed as a star. I dreamed a dream in time gone by. But from the moment she opened her mouth, her life changed. I dream of love never die. First wowing the crowd and skeptical judges at her audition. And then, thanks to YouTube, her voice reverberated around the world. That single performance viewed more than 20 million times since Saturday. New fan sites popping up all the time. She absolutely knew she was going to blow us away, and that's why I enjoyed it so much, because she was so courageous. And in an age when youth and beauty seem paramount, Susan Boyle defies convention, and no makeover is planned. But I think we'll keep her as she is for now, so she doesn't have the added pressure of worrying about what she looks like. And she'll just be the down-to-earth girl that we all have kind of fallen in love with. It was Paul Potts who first blazed the trail. Former cell phone salesman astonished the world with his voice. He won Britain's Got Talent three years ago. Now he's a millionaire, proving that talent can trump appearance and that for some, life really can change in an instant. For today, Donna Friesen, NBC News, London. And Susan Boyle is in her hometown of Blackburn, Scotland this morning. Susan, good morning to you. Good morning to you. I have watched this video now two or three times, okay, 12 or 14 <laughs> times, and, and I say the same thing that so many other people say. It's a simply thrilling moment, Susan. Has it sunk in for you yet? It hasn't sunk in for me yet. It's all a bit surreal at the moment. You know, what struck me is when you went out on that... When you went out on that stage, Susan, there were people in the audience booing, snickering, even the judges were rolling their eyes before you started to sing. If that had been me, I don't think I would have had the confidence to sing. Where did your confidence come from? It must have, must have, been, must have been inward somewhere. <laughs> I just had the ability to keep going. You have to keep going. Susan, can you describe the moment when you finished the very first part of your song and, and the crowd began to roar its approval and the faces of the judges began to beam? Can you, can you describe what you were feeling at that moment? It was really amazing. I was taken aback. But again, you keep going. You keep going and finish the song. How have the last few days been for you, Susan? I mean, you've got an awful lot of attention focused on you right now. Can you just talk about the impact it's had on your life? It's had a huge impact on my life. It's like a whirlwind, a roller coaster. I know that, uh, Susan, you mentioned during the audition that you've never been married, never been kissed, and now I'm hearing reports from the British tabloids, actually, that a lot of male suitors are trying to get your number. Is that true? Uh, no comment. No comment. <laughs> she likes her privacy, I can tell you that. Hey, Susan, this happened on the audition stage for Britain's Got Talent, so then you have to go to the real competition. What's your confidence level moving into that? Could you repeat the question, please? I'm just saying, are, are you confident now as the competition moves into the real aspect of it as opposed to the audition side of things? Well, I'm getting ready for the, the serious stuff now. I'm getting a bit, a bit more focused now. The nerves are still there, but that's a good thing. That's a good thing. It'll keep me going. Well, we have a little bit of a surprise for you, Susan. You may remember Paul Potts, the first uh, year of Britain's Got Talent during the auditions. He wowed everybody. He uh -huh. came out there, the cell phone salesman. No one expected what would come out of his mouth, and he is joining us at this moment. Paul, good morning to you as well. Good morning, Meredith. How are you? I am great. Paul, first of all, 
What did you think of Susan's performance? I think it was an incredible performance. Um, I think the unexpected can come at any time, and I'd, I'd like to say how well I think um, Susan is managing how her life will have changed over the last couple of days, and bearing in mind it's another six weeks before we get to the live stages, I think she's been handling this stuff incredibly well. Well, Paul, but give her a sense of what she might be in for in terms of attention and, and media spotlight. You've now lived through it. What should she expect? Um, I, I think she... I, I think she, she may well find herself going to places she's never been to. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm here in Australia and finding myself in places I'd never have dreamed of going. But I think that, I, I think that um, Susan should, you know, try and take each day as it comes. I know she's, I know she's aware of that. She's, she's talked about taking baby steps already, and um, I, and I wish her, I really do wish her well. I think she, she, she's um, got real potential. You think she's going to go the full distance, Paul? Putting you out on a limb. I I definitely think she stands a great chance. All right. Thank you, Paul. And Susan, before we let you go, could you give us just a little bit of a taste of that beautiful voice of yours? Okay. I dreamed a dream in time gone by When hope was high and life was living I dreamed that love would never die I pray that God would be forgiving. Then I was young and unafraid, and dreams were made and used and wasted. There was no ransom to be paid, no song on song, no wine on all right, Susan, we're going to let you save some for the real competition. <laughs> we vote, though, we thank you so much. We're so thrilled for you, and thank you for spending some time with us this morning. And, Paul, thank to you, thanks to you in Australia yeah. as well. Good luck to you as well. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Meredith. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And, by the way, Paul will be back on today in a few weeks to perform a song from his new album, Passione. Is that how you pronounce it? I believe it? it is. Which comes out on May 5th. He sang Nessa Dorma. That was the song. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nessa Dorma was so yeah. beautiful.